All right, everyone, welcome back to the land of Kem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. I hope you've enjoyed the Japan research expedition footage thus far. Now, before we proceed with the finale, in next week's Sunday site visit, I will be presenting some critical research regarding the geology and physics that are involved in the magnetic field phenomenon that we've discovered across these ancient sites. This is episode 141, Lightning and Magnetic Stones. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the ancient technology of a lost civilization, utilizing physics and chemistry, and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world, this is the channel for you. So please subscribe to The Land of Kevin here on YouTube. Don't forget to click that little notification bell so that you do not miss out on the new episodes that premiere twice per week. Please like, comment, share, and stay tuned if you want to help support the channel and get access to exclusive research and unreleased footage that you will not see anywhere else. Check out the Land of Chem members only channel and thelandofchem.com if you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch, both linked in the video description below. If you want to follow me on Instagram or on X, my handle is at the Land of Chem. Also, don't forget, after you finish watching this video, please go subscribe to Let's Go with Lex and G so you don't miss out on the rest of the amazing content from our Japan adventure. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, Thank you all so much for the support. I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. And in last week's Sunday Site Visit 86, we explored the Ogami Gaishi Stone Circle Complex, whose immense megaliths were radiating with profound magnetic fields. And today, I will be explaining exactly how these anomalies were created. So first, the geology. These huge boulders are andesite, and this type of stone is an igneous rock that is ejected during volcanic activity and is commonly found embedded in a foundation of volcanic ash and tough bedrock, such as is found all across Japan, which we will be getting to in just a moment. And andesite is significant and relevant due to its magnetite content, an iron-rich mineral that has strong magnetic properties. And as we advance into Sunday Site Visit 87, I want you to remember the scarring and pock-marked features covering these andesite boulders from the Ogami Gaishi stone circle that you can see here, all over the surface of this monolith obelisk, which also emitted the strongest magnetic field that we recorded at this site. As these surface features and the intense magnetic fields are a direct result of electric current discharge through the stone during lightning strikes. And my hypothesis, about the function of these stone circle systems to attract lightning has now been corroborated by two scientific academic publications that I will be presenting today. The first from the Kumamoto University in Japan and the second from the University of St. Andrews in Scotland. Now, in Members Only Episode 6, I explained the function of the Avebury Serpent Temple Complex that you can see here, and how the configuration of this structure interacted with telluric currents flowing through the Earth's crust to create the accumulation of positive charges on the surface of the ground, as you can see here in red. These positive charges operated as a target for negatively charged electrostatic discharge from lightning that was implemented in a variety of applications. So let's apply these mechanisms of operation with the accumulation of positive charges to attract negatively charged lightning into the stone circle to the site that you are about to see in next week's Sunday site visit, the Oshito Ishi Hill and just take a look at this andesite boulder with the weathered tapered apex here 
and the entire stone covered in the same pock marks and scarring features. And here is a picture of my beautiful wife, Alexa, from Ancient Odysseys, so you can get a sense of scale for the size of these stones. And these boulders of Oshito Ishi Hill have the same magnetic field anomalies that were discovered at the Ogami Gaishi stone circle. So what caused these scarring features and the strong magnetic fields? Allow me to present to you the following article from the researchers Kazuhiro Ichimura and Norio Iriguchi, Professor Emeritus of Kumamoto University discussing the Oshito Ishi Hill formation. And here, they describe the geological formation of the site, which is a natural volcanic bedrock foundation of tuff and welded tuff, embedded with andesite boulders that are now protruding from the flattened surface of the hill. And now, let's get to the fun part. And please keep in mind that this article was translated from Japanese as I will now quote the following sections here. Begin quote, stones are magnetized by thunder lightnings. One of the stones is called Saidan Ishi, shown in figure 11. Most stones, including the Saidan Ishi and the largest Taiyo Ishi, are magnetized. Those stones have many cracks and depressions. When a compass is brought close to the surface of the stone, the magnetic needle is deflected at a large angle. The stones are not possessed by a supernatural quote-unquote magnetic abnormality. The Oshito stones contain abundant magnetite or iron oxide, which is magnetic and electroconductive. The bare stones on the hill are like lightning rods ready to be struck by thunder lightnings. These stones have been attacked frequently by thunder and lightning strokes on the hill, and the positive charge of the ground was discharged repeatedly by the negative charge in the sky as large electric currents through those stones. The depressions and cracks on the surfaces are those scars, which you can very clearly see here in this picture. Next, resume quote, when a stone was attacked by a thunder lightning stroke, a large magnetic field was generated around the large electric current according to Ampere's law, which states the magnetic field created by an electric current is proportional to the size of that electric current. So the immense electric current from a lightning strike will also produce a proportionally massive magnetic field. And this is exactly what was happening to the stones at the top of Oshito Ishi Hill. Next, and I'll resume quoting here. When the heated magnetite was cooled down below the Curie temperature, the directions of magnetization were fixed and magnetic patches were left thereby. So the induced magnetic field created from repeated lightning strikes on the stones was then fixed as the stones cooled back down below the Curie point. And these permanent radiating magnetic fields are still locked inside of these andesite boulders to this day. Direct evidence of ancient lightning strikes on the stones located at the top of this volcanic tuff hill. But that's not the only scientific evidence that we have of the magnetic signature from lightning strikes on stone circles. Don't forget back in episode 116, proof of lightning at ancient stone circles, I discussed and presented the Calanace stone circle and the investigation by the St. Andrews University that discovered the star-shaped magnetic anomaly at the center of the stone circle. 
exactly like what we found at the center of its Japanese cousin site at the Ogami Gaishi Stone Circle that you saw last week. And I will quote here, quote, these features are interpreted as indicative of past lightning strikes. And I'll resume quoting again here. The spatial size and intensity of this fossil lightning magnetic signature also suggests that it may represent multiple repeated strikes and also for it to have had a relatively high current density. So now I have provided evidence to support my hypothesis that these ancient stone circle systems were designed to attract lightning. And the question you should now be asking yourself is, why? And in episode 142, I will be explaining the genesis of ancient lightning technology, describing exactly how it was developed and providing the impetus for its implementation that would justify the construction of these immense megalithic stone circle monuments by not only the ancient Japanese Jomen, but also by other Neolithic civilizations across the world. This is an episode you do not want to miss, so if you haven't already, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube, click that little notification bell, and I will see you soon in Sunday Site Visit 87. All right, everyone, that's it for today's video. This was episode 141, Lightning and Magnetic Stones. I really hope you enjoyed today's video, and in the next episode in the series, Sunday Site Visit 87, we will be exploring the Oshito Ishi Hill, so you can see these stones covered with lightning scarring and the intense magnetic fields up close in person. This is an episode you do not want to miss, so if you haven't already, please subscribe to The Land of Heaven here on YouTube. If you're interested in the ancient technology of a lost civilization, utilizing physics and chemistry and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world. If you want to help support the channel, check out the Land of Chem members only channel and thelandofchem.com. If you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch, both linked in the video description below. If you want to follow me on Instagram or on X, my handle is at the Land of Chem. Also, don't forget, after you finish watching this video, please go subscribe to Let's Go with Lex and G so you don't miss out on the rest of the amazing content from our Japan Research Expedition. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, <laughs> thank you all so much for the support. I think that is it for today's episode. So I will see you. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now. <laughs>